All right, welcome everyone. And thank you for joining the African African American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne's Research Tools and Tips Workshop. Uh, this month we are presenting, um, or rather every month we present a free workshop about various genealogy topics. And today's topic is let's host a virtual reunion. I'm Ngozi Rogers. I am the secretary of the African American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne. Um, uh, this is my first time presenting, so bear with me. Um, a couple of housekeeping uh, issues. Please uh, keep your microphones muted. If you have a question during my presentation, please put it in the chat. There will be a question and answer period at the end, and I will be sending out the handout. Um, uh, later. Uh, this presentation is also being uh, presented in person. There are people here in the room with me, as well as online uh, for those people who are joining me via Zoom. Um, I've learned from being a part of this genealogy society to always start with who am I? And I am Ngozi Rogers, the daughter of Bertha Jane Bennett Rogers, born in 1935 who was the daughter of Arthur Russell Bennett, born in uh, 1909, who was the son of Cassius Marcellus Bennett, born about 1872, who was the son of William Bennett, who was born about 1850. Um, so let's get started. Let me uh, share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so again, I call this presentation, Hello, I'm a Bennett. And it is a part of our society's research tools and tips um, workshop, as I told you, uh, the title, Let's Host a Virtual Reunion. My screen won't advance. Oh, there it is, sorry. Um, so let's start with the obvious. Why host a virtual family reunion? Well, it's low cost to host. There is no cost uh, for you to attend. It is very easy for you to attend. It is elderly friendly. The, um, the elders don't have to travel, which is one of the uh, common reasons why they may or may not attend a in-person reunion. It is safe, COVID-free. You are at home. Um, you can use your telephone, your uh, laptop, or your tablet to attend. Uh, it's an easy way to share and collect genealogy research, and it's a great way to inspire and uh, connect with family. So this is specifically talking about the virtual reunion that I helped to organize and host uh, for my the Bennett side, which is my maternal grandfather's side. So how do we begin? Let's get this party started. First, you'll want to gather your team. Uh, it could be your family genealogist, um, your party planners, your historians. You'll need some tech savvy folks, uh, teachers. You're basically planning a party. So people who like to talk and get together. Uh, you'll want to create a Zoom account. Um, the thing about Zoom is if you, if you have a free account, it only gives you 45 minutes uh, to, have, to have meetings. And of course, by the time you introduce yourself and say hello and chit chat, the 45 minutes is over. So I myself have a basic account, which is $14.99 a month. Um, and it allows me to connect with as many people and for as long as possible. There, there is a, a limit on that, um, and I don't recall what that is. Um, and then you have your people, you create your Zoom account, you'll schedule a meeting. 
at that first meeting, what you want to do is brainstorm ideas for your party, because let's, let's be honest, a reunion is like uh, planning a party. And you'll want to keep all of your notes, because as you brainstorm, some of the ideas are going to be better suited for Zoom. Some of them are going to be better suited for uh, an in-person reunion or uh, for other, um, other use. And you're going to decide what activities and information you want to share at your virtual reunion. Decisions, decisions, decisions. You'll want to ask yourself, what is your focus of your reunion? What is your theme? Uh, what is your mission statement? Um, what is important to know and to share? When will you host the reunion? And who will do what? For the uh, Bennett family reunion, our goals were, just to give you an example, to share history of our family, to let our elders speak, to acknowledge the spouses of our uh, Bennett family, to identify our ancestors, to include the children. We always wanna make sure the youth are involved and active, to collect genealogy information and old photos, to incorporate faith and prayer, and to stay connected. There were eight members of our um, planning committee, and these were the top goals that we came up with um, for our virtual reunion. So what we decided to do was, this is kind of like the who, what, when, where, who, the Bennett family, what, we're gonna have a virtual reunion when we decided on October, and we decided to do a three-day virtual reunion to mimic an in-person reunion, how we're gonna do it via Zoom, and why to celebrate the descendants of Cassius and Maddie Scott Bennett. After that, you've decided what you're gonna do and when, um, how are you gonna communicate the reunion um, to your family? So what we did was we created a Facebook page. We called it Bennett Pride. It is a private Facebook page. You have to either be invited or if you send us a request, um, we have to let you in. There were people who were concerned about confidentiality, would other people be able to see our family information. If you have a private Facebook page, you can control that. And so we created a Facebook page and encouraged family to join. Um, the beauty about Facebook and Zoom is that they work together. So if we are having a virtual reunion on Zoom, we can stream it live on our Facebook page. And the benefit of that is if you're not able to get in, you can go to the Facebook page and you can watch it live. And also once it's streamed to our Facebook page, it's recorded there and you can watch it again. So it's a place to keep that recording. Um, I have a television background, so I also recorded the video myself. Uh, Zoom allows you to record it onto your computer or up into the cloud. And so I can um, take the reunion and edit it down into smaller chunks and repost it, make DVDs of it to give to family. There's a lot of uh, things that, that I can do having recorded it myself. So to welcome people to the Bennett Family Reunion, we used uh, a lot of uh, different technologies. So we used Facebook. As I said, we created a private family Facebook page. For people who are on Facebook, you can just send them an invite if you're friends of, um, who are a member of the Facebook page and you have friends in your, 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 your friends are your family. You can invite them from your page to join the private Facebook page. Um, we used email to reach out to those who didn't have a Facebook page. Uh, we use text messages for people who are strictly using text messages, and we also call people. Um, and the beauty of that is that it all works together. <clears throat> um, we use these uh, technologies to invite people to the family reunion, to let them know that it was coming, to let them know the kinds of things that we were doing. And then also we use those same technologies to request family photos and information. So someone could call me and say, um, 
here is my family uh, group sheet. Someone could text me that information. Someone could email me that. They could also email me photos. Um, they could text me photos or they could post photos on the Facebook page. And as the organizer or the host, I could download those photos and use them in the virtual reunion. So it's a great way to get information in and send information out. So we decide that we adopted or decided to use the, the phrase Bennett pride. We wanted to instill pride in being a Bennett and being a part of this family. We chose the theme then, now, and forever. Um, and we chose this image. Um, the interesting thing about this image is that I have had this picture, a cousin of mine sent it to me. Um, and because my grandfather is a twin, I looked at this face and I looked at this face and whoops, let's go back. And I decided that this was my grandpa. Looked like my grandpa. That's my grandpa. That's what I decided looking at that picture. But I didn't know who else was in that photo. So we decided to honor the descendants of Cassius M. and Maddie Jane, maiden name Scott Bennett. This is a photo at the top that I also received from one of my cousins. Um, and that is Cassius on the left and Maddie on the right. And then the um, information about their birth dates I got from the family Bible that my mother has. Um, and so I took a picture of that and we were able to get the information of their birth dates off of the front page of the family Bible. And again, here at the bottom, you've got Russell and Roy. Those are, that's my grandpa and his twin, uh, November 22nd, 1909. Uh, remember, it was important to us to honor the um, spouses. And so uh, we wanted to list who was married to whom and also in bold, that was the name that uh, the Bennett uh, was known as. So even though Benjamin's name was Benjamin Bruce, most called him Bruce. And so if I hear Uncle Bruce, I know that it is Benjamin Bruce and he married Rosie. And we don't know her last name yet. When we were in this planning process, even though I'm a perfectionist, I, was, I kept telling our uh, eight person planning committee that we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have all of the information because we want people to get involved. We want people to, um, to join and help us. So um, a couple of members of the planning committee were already doing genealogy on the family. This helped inspire them to dig deep and get in even more information. And from that, uh, we found that uh, first off, Cassius, my great, great grandfather, his name was spelled C-A-S-H-U-S, -S, Cassius Marcellus and Maddie Jane, maiden name Scott Bennett. They were married January 10th, 1895, when Cassius, known as Cash, most everyone called him Cash, was 23 and Maddie was 25. We found out that the Bennett family migrated from Kentucky to Indiana. And as you can see, we also found out who was married to whom um, and there, his son named Cassius, spelled C-A-S-S-I-U-S, -S -S, everyone called him Cash Jr. And because we knew that, we assumed that, that Cassius, Cash Jr.'s father's name was also spelled the same, but in doing our research, we found out that it was not. So we noted that at the bottom. They were not technically senior and junior because of the spelling. However, the younger Cassius was called Cash Jr., after the nickname everyone called his father, which was Cash. I also want to point out on this page that um, John Howard married Luella Watkins, and then my grandfather, Russell Arthur, married Mary Reva Watkins, who was Luella uh, Watkins' sister, and that'll come into play a little later on. So when we started to contact family, letting them know we were going to do a virtual re reunion in October, and we were letting them know that we needed uh, family information and we were all also looking for photos, we were able to get a photo of all of the living nine children. We finally called them the Bennett Nine. And I had never seen 
uh, images of all of my grandfather's siblings. I had heard my mother talk about Aunt Grace, Aunt Elizabeth, um, Uncle Howard, but I never had faces to put to those names until we did this virtual reunion. So once we decided uh, we were gonna do a three-day reunion, and like I said, we were going to mimic an in-person reunion, we decided on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday night, just like an in-person reunion, um, we did a um, meet and greet, which was to get to know the family and kind of do a roll call. Two members were assigned to each of these sessions. One member was the person that was going to be the host or the person who, when you joined the Zoom, would say, hi, Linda, thank you for joining. Let us know how you're connected to the family. Never let us know where you're calling from so that people got to know each other. And then the second person would be the person who would, um, if you had graphics or PowerPoint, who would um, share their screen and put those on screen for everybody. So Friday night was the meet and greet. Saturday uh, from two to four, we did the Ban Bennett family story, uh, the family tree, family roll call, elder talk. I'm showing you this just to give you an idea of how we laid out the schedule. So we needed to know who was going to do what, who was the host, who was the support person. And as the, um, I have a background in, in television. So as that person, I was the one who was behind the scenes, letting people in, uh, changing the names uh, on the screen so that we knew exactly who they were and placing things, um, PowerPoint on the screen, like, like I'm doing now. So I'm gonna break those down. So Friday night, we did the meet and greet. If you'll notice, times are Eastern Standard Time. A Zoom allows you to pick a time and then, you know, um, so everyone knows it's Eastern Standard Time, which was, which was really nice. Um, to show our Bennett pride, the planning committee selected colors for each branch, each child of Cassius and Maddie. Uh, Bennett. And um, this was good because in the Zoom, and we let the family know in advance, in the Zoom, um, if you're familiar with Zoom, everyone is in a little box. And so visually, if someone was wearing green, you knew that they were um, a descendant of Bruce Bennett. If they were wearing yellow, they were a descendant of Cassius Jr. Uh, my favorite color is purple. And so I selected purple for my family, uh, the descendants of Russell Bennett. On Saturday, uh, we did a Bennett family story. Um, we talked, let the elders talk and share their story, which was really great because at in-person reunions, maybe someone is in a corner talking to a group of people, you're someplace else having food or you're talking to somebody else and you miss those stories that our elders, um, uh, uh, oh, there's someone else coming in, sorry. And you miss those stories that our elders um, talk about. So we were able to talk about the migration of our ancestors from Kentucky to Richmond. We were able to focus on our elders talking about their memories. And remember, I'm recording and I'm also streaming it live on Facebook. So if you, if you weren't able to get into the Zoom or you forgot and you, you joined our Facebook page, you, you could actually watch it and listen to it there. Saturday um, later, we have a family game night. You know, kids and activities are really important to us. We're, you know, we're, we had those in our goal list. So we did, um, we made coloring pages for the kids to color. We did a scavenger hunt, which is a big hit for kids. Uh, you see them take off and come back with the item that you've asked them to find. We found a YouTube video that uh, talk to children about the family tree and how everybody's connected. And because faith and um, prayer was um, important to us, we did a Bible trivia game. I want to show you these coloring pages that I came up with. This was a, uh, a color. It was in color. I changed it to black and white. And at the bottom, my ancestors were migrant farmers. They farmed other people's farms until they bought their own land. They used a horse and a plow. There were no tractors those days. The Bennett family migrated from Kentucky to Indiana to give the kids uh, not just something to color, but also 
a message. The other coloring page, uh, this is my ancestor. Her name is Margaret Floyd Scott. She was a slave. Her husband's name is George Washington Scott. She is my, and then I left blanks so that they and their parents could figure out uh, how many greats, um, you know, grandmother, that the child that this woman was to them. And without her, I would not be here today. Now, the interesting thing about this image is this is an actual photo of my, and I always have to look, my great, great grandmother, Margaret Floyd Scott. This picture has hung on the wall of my mother's home for as long as I can remember. And it just kind of blends in. You just see it and you don't really think about it. And then when we were uh, putting this virtual reunion together, I remembered, hey, we've got this photo. And it was my, uh, the rest of the planning committee that confirmed for me who she was. Um, and that's what we used. And so the, the, the coloring page that they have is an actual um, ancestor. Then Saturday night, usually for in-person, you might have a banquet with music and um, dancing. We recreated that on Zoom. We had um, music playing in the background. We had um, uh, an icebreaker. And this gave the older cousins, the adults, an opportunity to just sit and talk um, with each other. Uh, kind of like, you know, an after party. And then on Sunday, we did the history of the Bennett Family Church in Richmond, Indiana. Excuse me. One of my cousins had the testimonial of Father Abraham, uh, Cassius M. Bennett Sr. Again, they called him Sr., um, who is my great grandfather. Um, someone interviewed him, typed it up. This was, seven, this was a seven page document that someone in our family had. And it wasn't until the virtual reunion that it all kind of started pouring out, like, hey, I've got this, you've got that, which really gave us a lot of information, not just about the family, but about him. And I'll just read this section. This is talking about how um, my, the Bennett family helped found, uh, it was the Church of God and Saints of Christ in Richmond, Indiana. He says, finally, I agreed to use my credit standing to keep the doors open because the, the church couldn't uh, keep the doors open. Later, I wondered if I had my right mind, but I was in too deep to care because so I became so involved with this little group that I became a full-fledged member in 1920. I was paying tithes a year before joining. I threw away my chewing tobacco, talked of other more important things than war and politics. I am a Christian and a member of the only church I ever knew, the Church of God and Saints of Christ. I had heard that my great grandfather uh, didn't want anything to, to do with the church. I heard that he wasn't into religion, um, that my great grandmother, Maddie Jane Scott uh, Bennett was the one that actually heard these, this, the group of this, um, some, some people from this choir on a street corner in Richmond, Indiana. And this seven page document gives more information. It tells you the, the, the street corner, it tells you that she was going to, she had asked uh, my great grandfather Cassius what he wanted for dinner. He wanted something other than what she had already prepared. And so she was going to go get him what he wanted to eat. She heard these people singing, the singing spoke to her, and that's when she decided to join that church and to help them build church in Richmond. He wanted no part of it, but apparently after a year of um, being around it, he too, um, became a member of the church. Um, that church, Church of God and Saints of Christ, is located at 1002 Perry Street in Richmond, Indiana. The uh, Perry, Perry Street, P-A-R-R-Y. A. Sorry, that's someone in the room. Remember, it's online and in person. That's okay. 1002 Perry Street in Richmond, Indiana. The Bennett family was one of the founding families the cornerstone was laid in 1921. So I had a cousin who had this picture on the left. That is the church in 1921. Uh, I don't remember who's standing there, but a cousin who still lives in Richmond went and took a picture last year of the church in 2020. It is still on its same foundation. It is still in operation. And this year, uh, 2021, it's celebrating its 100th 
anniversary in Richmond, Indiana. Another cousin came up with this photo, which is the 1962 Passover celebration in Richmond, Indiana. That's the same church. And here you see, I, I don't know if this is the entire congregation, but that's a lot of people, you know, and that's a wonderful photo that we didn't have before we decided to do this virtual reunion. So you would think that that is the end. We accomplished what we came out to do. We did a three-day virtual reunion, but that is not the end because the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today, well, I'm ahead of myself, because when you have an in-person reunion, you also have a souvenir book. So we created a souvenir book, not just from the things that we covered in the reunion, but also additional information from that brainstorming session off the top. So we have the cover, we have a letter to the family um, with our mission statement. You know, we identify the planning committee. We uh, give them that image of the Bennett Nine, the colors that they're supposed to wear, the, um, the schedule of our reunion, tips for a fun virtual reunion on Zoom. Uh, for those who weren't familiar with Zoom at the time, we give them this image of the, the names from the family Bible we found out, or I found out, that the picture that I had is of Cassius and Maddie Jane Scott Bennett on their 50th wedding anniversary, and that's from 1945. So when we were doing this, the photos that I had, I'm getting information from all of my cousins about who's in the photo, what year the photo is, and what event it's celebrating, which is absolutely priceless. So then, the Bennett migration to Indiana story, we put that in the souvenir book. We, because we wanted to connect the dots to our ancestors, here we have Cassius Marcellus Clay Bennett and his parents, William Bennett and Almerinda Jennings. We have Maddie Jane Scott Bennett and her parents, George Washington Scott. And then there's that picture that's in my mother's house, Margaret Floyd. We give the, uh, the information about the Church of God and Saints of Christ. Um, and this, is, um, this story is actually a combination of what my great-grandfather Cassius said, what my great-grandmother Mary Maddie Jane said. And then there's that picture um, from the 1962 Passover. Uh, on the right there, we had other family members who came up with photos of the members of the church. And I also found out that my grandmother uh, my maternal grandmother um, uh, wrote, um, I love thy church, O God, a, a church anthem that is still sung in the Church of God and Saints of Christ today. So any information that we found while we were gathering uh, family information and photos, we also included in the souvenir book. Thing that I've learned being a part of this society is it's more than just gathering names and dates. We want to put meat on those bones and learn more about each individual. So we put together a did you know page uh, to help people have, an, have a better idea of our ancestors. For example, Cassius, my great-grandfather Cash, was a gifted mathematician. He'd calculate everything in his head. Uh, that my great-grandmother, Maddie Bennett, lived to be 98 years old. And her father, George Washington Scott, lived to be 108 or 109. This is information I never would have known if I hadn't participated in this virtual reunion and that I'm able to share with my, uh, my family and also memorials just of our ancestors. And we did that on purpose because we wanted to have a place to go um, after this virtual reunion. This is our starting point. And then we decided um, that in our virtual reunion, because we talked about the children of Cassius and Maddie, in our next reunion, we would talk about the children of the children of Cassius and Maddie. So we're going, um, looking towards the next generation for the in-person reunion. All those photos that we gathered when we asked a uh, family um, to send in old photos, we created a Google Slides um, document that um, uh, uh, link is listed there at the top. Because this is a digital document, there weren't any printing costs. If you sent us your email, we would email you this booklet. You could print it off yourself. 
um, to have a hard copy. And because it was a digital document, you could look at this and actually click on that link. And that is where we um, took all of the photos that people sent, we identified the photos, and you could uh, look through the photos and actually not only see the people, but know who they uh, are. Um, and then uh, what's next? We let people know because this was in October, we wanted our family to vote <laughs> last year, really important year, November 3rd. We wanted them to stay connected by joining the Bennett Pride Facebook page, to continue sharing your family photos on the Facebook page, to continue to search and share photos, and to help fund the, 22, the 2022 in-person reunion. Just like uh, a regular reunion, we were also able to put together t-shirts that you could order online that would be printed, made, and shipped to you. And so there was uh, very little cost for us to put this together other than the time and the talent of the planning committee. Um, I also want to say, lastly, that um, this African proverb came to mind. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Because I will tell you that in doing this virtual reunion, I had um, access to all of my cousins. They were able to, to talk and to share, whether it was on the Facebook page, um, via email, text, or just calling them. That photo that I had in the beginning, someone had the original with the names written on the back. And they were able to tell me that my grandpa was actually the young man on the lower left holding the chicken. I kind of cropped this photo, but he's actually holding the chicken. And then it identifies everyone else in this photo. So the man holding the gun, that is my grandfather's father. That is Cassius. Uh, as a younger man. And the woman standing next to him in the, the, the hat, that is my grandfather's mother. That is Maddie Jane. And this picture was taken in, uh, in around the 1920s. The other wonderful thing about this is that I was really interested in the gun. At the reunion, we found this ancestor. His name is also Cassius George. He is my grandfather's nephew and his family inherited that rifle. That is the same rifle from 1920 in the picture on the left to when I, I actually went to his home and I interviewed him uh, on video and he showed me the gun and he talked about how he used to use it to go hunting. So you're thinking about this antique and he would use it, you know, it's, it's a gun, he would use it. So again, it was just um, having everyone together, connecting all of these dots um, this this uh, photo that my cousin found and shared of a 1962 Passover celebration in Richmond, Indiana, he asked me, does anybody look familiar in this picture? And it's really tiny. But I look here in the corner and someone does look familiar. Now, the beauty of this is this is a high resolution photo. So I was able to zoom in. The red arrow, that's my oldest brother. The yellow arrow, that's my second oldest brother. That's Ricky, uh, the red, the red arrow, arrow, that is my brother, Fiddy, or Forrest, we call him Fiddy. The green arrow, that is my uncle Leon hiding in the back. Yes, Leon. And then the, the, the blue arrow, uh, arrow, that's my grandmother. Uh, Mary Reva Watkins Bennett. Now, remember, Richmond, if you're not familiar with Richmond, Indiana, it's about 45 minutes left is west, right is east, east of Indianapolis, which is two hours south of Fort Wayne. Um, this may have been the entire congregation or most of them. So once we were able to zoom in and look through, there were a lot of people that I recognized, including my own family. So imagine... Oh, that's all right. Oh, we have somebody here in the room that says, is it the building here on the on the right, in the corner, right-hand corner? Is this your grade school? Yeah. Well, this is, this picture is from 1962, 1962. She's saying it's Hibbard. 10. So that was Hibbard High School. 
Hibbert Elementary and Junior High. Yeah. Okay. So those, those are the people commenting here in the room with me. And so I didn't know that. Yeah. The South side of Richmond. Right. Right. So, so just from this photo, she saw something in the room that, I mean, I saw it, but I didn't know what it was. So the beauty of a virtual reunion is you've got all these people in line, you show this picture and then you get reactions like that. Well, wait a minute, that's my cousin. This is someone else. That building is that. That's the beauty of having everybody together. Give me just a second for question. <laughs> that's okay, sorry. I'm almost done. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here are some other things, <clears throat> pardon me, that I found just doing this process. This is a picture of my mother, Bertha Jane Bennett Rogers, and her brother, Leon Russell Bennett. And someone found and sent me this. This is a picture of my mother. Uh, I would say she's maybe nine. I'm not exactly sure. And then this is a picture of my uncle Leon, photos that we never had. Also, yeah. She's saying, there's someone here saying that, that my um, grandfather and grandmother live, and it's true, they live the street in front of the church. So we would walk um, from my grandfather's house through the alley, through someone else's yard, which was, was, was a relative, the Clarks, across the street, and then, yeah, my sister's here, so she's saying it was Marsha, Marsha Clark, and Grandma Maddie's house. Okay, so <clears throat> our family had these photos. On the left, my maternal grandmother, Mary Reva Watkins. This is the only photo that we had of her. My, uh, she died after when my sister was about, when my sister was four, my sister's in the room. So I never got to meet her. I knew my grandfather. I called him grandpa. This is my maternal grandfather, Russell Arthur Bennett. But I would always refer to my grandmother as mom's mom. It's as if she wasn't really real to me. You know, I knew my grandfather. I grew up with him. I loved him. She was just this imaginary person that I heard things about. But this picture doesn't do her justice. So during this process, someone sent us a picture of my grandmother and a picture of my grandfather when he was younger. I see this face. I see my mother. I see my nieces, I see where I get dimples. So I see this picture and I say, that is Grandma Mary and that is Grandpa Russell. And with these photos on my table at home, I now have, and I'm able to, when I come and I sit and I have my hot tea or my breakfast, I will say, good morning, mom. Good morning, Grandma Mary. Good morning, Grandpa Russell. Good morning, great grandpa. Cassius, good morning, great grandma, Maddie, and good morning, great, great grandma, uh, Margaret. And so that is the end of my presentation. Uh, my name again is Ngezi Rogers, the secretary of the African American Genealogical Society of Fort Wayne. You can contact me at our um, society email address. Um, AAGSFW at gmail.com. And we are also on Facebook. Just search for AAGSFW. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm pretty much on time. And so now, if you have questions, now would be the time. So you can either type it in the chat or I can um, unmute you and you can ask me a question. Any questions? Oh, or someone here in the room, if you have a question or a comment, you're gonna say something. Correct. Uh, she's she's asking about uh, us having our Sunday program Sunday morning, uh, Church of God and Saints of Christ, which my cousins are still uh, members of. They go to church on Saturdays and dinner after. 
um, I was too young. I was never, <laughs> I um, uh, didn't know all that. I just do, I do remember um, uh, my, uh, taking my mother to, um, to visit her old church and everybody was in uniform. And so we, we stuck out. Yeah, yeah. But in those pictures, the, the shirt is blue and the skirts are black or brown. There's a specific uniform that they wear but I didn't know anything about my mother's religion. I thought she was Pentecostal. I used to joke that my mom was Pentecostal, my father was Methodist, and then my mother split the difference by raising us Lutheran. It's just things that you say until you really have those conversations. But, oh, they were definitely Pentecostal. Okay, so you, so, Okay, so someone in the room is saying that her husband's family, they were Lewis's, and they attended the Church of God and Saints of Christ Church, or your mother-in-law's church, on what's what North 14th Street in Richmond. Yeah, there's a north side and a south side of Richmond, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So she's talking about Francis Daniels, which is a cousin of ours. So you're from Richmond. Oh, so we have someone in the room who's actually from Richmond. So she was the one that identified that building as, is it Hubbard or Hibbard? Hibbard. Elementary. And junior high. Yep, and my family lived across the street. Oh, so she knows my uncle Leon because they're about the same age or he might be a year older or younger. Oh, so and that's what I'm talking about. The more you talk, the more things come together. So she's saying that who moved your mother and I'm sorry, you said her mother-in-law. Down the street on Perry. So if we do this again, we're going to have to have a microphone. So they're talking about the streets in Richmond. So they're talking about Louise Jet. So they have a lot of people in common here. I don't know if you guys can hear. No, okay. All within two blocks. Different denominations, she's saying. So we have a comment from Doris Green, excellent presentation. Our family have a family Zoom every Sunday afternoon. Because of these meetings, we have started an investment club starting a family legacy. That is awesome, Doris, thank you for sharing. I, I will tell you that um, um, when my Watkins side, remember I said that Luella Watkins married Uncle Howard and then my mother Mary Reba Watkins married my grandfather. So I did this uh, virtual Zoom or virtual reunion for my Bennett side. So when the Watkins found out, they were like, well, you've got to do one for us. And on the Zoom today is actually my cousin, Deborah Johnson Simon, who was a part of that. Um, and we did that not last weekend, but the weekend before. It was also a three-day um, weekend or three-day uh, virtual reunion. But um, one of the, the focus of the Watkins side, what they wanted to do was to reconnect. And so what we did was we had a Sunday uh, each month we had a Sunday Zoom where we would encourage family to come. We would have a game. We would play Name That Tune or we would play uh, Family Feud. Um, we had an adult scavenger hunt, which was hilarious to see it scattered <laughs> to go find a pair of red socks. It, it was the funniest thing. And we would post that on the Watkins Moore family Facebook page so that people could um, know what we were doing. But the main part, the, the reason that we did that was because when you go to a family reunion, a lot of times you don't really know anyone, especially uh, younger people. 
maybe my sister knows people and she walks around and talks to people. But if I don't follow her, I don't know who these people are. So you tend to sit at your table with your immediate family, you eat, you listen to the um, presentation or whatever, and you go home. So the Watkins wanted us to get to know each other. So we would ask questions like, um, who, who likes to bake? Who likes to cook? Does anybody play golf? And we, we talk to each other on these Sunday Zooms so that when we have our in-person reunion, God willing, in 2022, you're actually, you actually know people and you're excited to go and see these people that you've been talking to, that, who, that have been talking trash. We have a lot of trash talkers on the Watkins side. I mean, we're all competitive, but I mean, the Watkins side just puts my Bennett side to shame. And maybe the Bennett's, they were just more reserved, but um, um there are variations. I, I wanted to mention this. Um, uh, so the Watkins, what we did was we had a live DJ on Saturday night who played music. We had one of the uh, Price brothers who was the hype man. For example, he would say, oh, Dwayne, now I know you heard, you know this music. You might as well get on up and dance. We had couples doing step dancing. We had uh, dance-offs. What's that? Talent. Talent. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so um, I've heard um, people have a comedian at one of their reunions. Anything that you can do. I mean, you know, we're so used to watching television. The, the, the application of Zoom can be used for a wide variety of um, activities. And like I said, just, just, just feeling the love from family, getting the genealogy research and putting names to faces from not just photos, but if you've heard about uh, Cousin Doris, you actually see Cousin Doris. You know, if you've heard stories about Uncle Vaughn, you see Uncle Vaughn. And so if you haven't done a virtual reunion or, you know, you want more information, that's why I did this presentation today. Any other questions? Yes. So how did you, you have a very talkative thing. How on Zoom, did you manage to have all this interaction going on? In Woo-sa. Way Woo-sa. Okay. Once again, the Bennett's, you know, they were like, watch it now. It's it's her turn. We were, they were very civilized, very Dwayne, you go first, Doris, you go second, everything else. The Watkins, I'm trying to tell you. When I uh, said, let's have a two-hour session, um, my Watkins family said two hours. I don't, I don't know if we can do anything in two hours. And they did not. Friday night was four and a half hours. They were, they were making sure that everyone had the opportunity to speak, which is good. We got to hear from everybody. But four and a half hours in the television world is, I'm pulling my hair out. I'm telling you. But there is something about people talking over each other. Me being the tech person, I was, I was like muting people. It is not your turn to speak. And in the chat, I was able to tell you, Linda, give us a moment. I mean, it was, it was a lot. But if everybody's talking, you can't hear, you can't share. The next step that I would probably do for the Watkins family is with Zoom, you can break out into rooms. So if Dwayne and Roberto want to have a talk about way back when, you go in a room and you talk about it, whoever wants to join that conversation, go. Because there has to be some sense of order, there has to be some sense of control, and I am my mother's daughter, and apparently I was that person. So Alfred Brothers is asking, where, what, where were your Watkins, where's the Watkins family from? Um, um, I'm telling you, they did so much partying, the Watkins. I, maybe Deborah, actually, Deborah, you could answer that question. Because Deborah was on the planning committee for the Watkins reunion, and she uh, has done extensive genealogy on the Moore side, because it was the Watkins Moore family. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the Watkins and Moores married and um i'm i'm a more and uh so i had trouble with those watkins too so uh, let's just put that on, on record to get started yeah those watkins are off the chain 
and yeah. it was the best fun ever. Yes, I, I got to understand why we married into them. Yeah. <laughs> all, all of the double marriages and all of the other things. But um, it was um, Kentucky, Virginia, Indiana. Uh, those were the migration uh, parts for uh, both Moors and Watkins. Yeah, you have Kentucky um, with the Moors, we have uh, Virginia with Watkins because I started out um, in studying the Moors. Uh, I ended up doing a line of the Watkins. And uh, so that's how I got a lot more uh, so much more information because we were seeing all of these uh, different patterns of migration and people interacting in, in, in the marriage, but it was the best fun ever. Yeah. I'm more of a paper and pencil in the stacks research person, but let me tell you, once you start with these reunion virtual, and I'm just so looking forward to in person, uh, they force you to, to uh, interact with them and, and get to know you. And um, it's just amazing how you feel so welcome and so much a part of things. So, um, and during a pandemic where everybody's having to stay even cautious now, right. it was the best of all opportunities. And thank you for all the work that you do. To, uh, and goes if we're putting it together because Gussie, I'm telling you, <laughs> the Watkins were the key. key. I'm telling you, it was like mute, 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 stay muted. We weren't having it. No, they were not. But but when we had that live DJ, we partied until like one or two o'clock in the morning. And everybody I know I watched all the next day. So thank you for streaming. If anybody's putting this together again, make sure you have that Facebook part. Uh, down to a science because um, being able to see the live streaming of things going on, but not um, having to deal so much with the Zoom and right. and some of the the problems of the you know how you freeze and those kinds of things um, can be challenging. But watching where. You are definitely muted because you're seeing the stream. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. So thank yeah. you. And you can watch it again right. um, with, with the recording. And I have watched uh, those things and gone to the Facebook page and asked my kids, my grandkids have uh, been watching it and, and joined it because of the surprises that, that come out of us all putting our piece into the uh, we use that uh kind of uh quilting metaphor with what we're doing and it i mean we are such a patchwork such an amazing uh piece of material now i will i will jump in and say that the other focus of the watkins reunion is that we know that we're related to the Moors, you know, cousin Deborah is a Moor, but we didn't know how. It's like, you know, you know someone is your cousin, you don't know how. So our focus was connecting the Watkins to the Moor, to the Moors. And there were plenty of aha moments. It's like, so that's why when you talk about, you know, cousin or aunt Arletha, my mom talks about her as, as aunt, or it was everybody just, just understanding how we were connected. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And for, oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Roberta, you have digitally raised your hand. So I've asked you to unmute. Can you unmute yourself, Roberta? There you go. Well, you know, I'm trying to follow the rules. <laughs> yes, so I, raised... I will mute you. Yes, yes. <laughs> And you know how I feel about all that. But nonetheless, um, I just wanted to, to chime in. I have a stack schedule today like crazy, and I'm not joking. 
uh, along with uh, uh, people recovering from surgery that I have to take care of. In the meantime, I wanna thank you, Nguzi, for taking the helm today and sharing your excellent, excellent research. And I, I won't uh, hesitate to say that I once again applaud you for taking, uh, the, taking the reign of Queen Bertha and, and moving on with your family research. This is something that um, I'm not sure she's emphasized enough because her mother did do extensive, extensive research that didn't really take her into the digital world where she's able to share this information so magnificently as Nguzi has. So as we are all doing this type of research, the great thing about it is to have someone care enough to pick up where you left off, to hone it into something that can take the ball and, and throw it into the court, the next court. And what she's prepared and the way she's prepared it uh, is uh, both um, fascinating and enviable for those of us who don't have that technical skill. But she, what she's done is prepared it in such a way that the next generation can grasp hold and move forward should she decide to stop doing research or be stopped from doing research and someone else will be able to grab hold to this fabulous information and take it on and sharing it. Another component of what she just shared, the emphasis to the young people, getting the young people involved to where they can identify something that makes them curious enough to get in deep and, and start thinking about it now while they're young. And it's something they won't let go of. They won't let go of it. Once you throw it in their lap like that and in their face and in their mind, they won't let go of it. They may not show it and they may not talk about it for a long time, but they will remember and they will take hold. So all of us have that mission. All of us who are doing a relevant research, we have to make sure that we reach some young people that will keep the ball rolling. And I applaud you. Uh, so proud to say, Madam Secretary, I thank you for this excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Dr. Brothers? Oh, go ahead. Vaughn, you got to unmute. Yeah, I. I uh oh. You got to unmute yourself again. I don't know what happened. Let's see if I can. Okay, got. Yep, go ahead. All right, thank you. Yeah, hello, everyone. And uh, I, I also enjoyed this presentation. It's very interesting. And, you know, you went, went pretty deep on all of that. You know, that, you know, while I was sitting there thinking, listening to you, I'm like, you know, it's something that we might want to do as far as our Burnett family. Because the last reunion we had was in 2017 in Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Maryland. And, and we always want to get together again and, and plan another one. But uh, as the older people are passing on, you know, like you said, we got to get the in, the younger people interested. Yes, and that, that was great. Thank you. You're welcome. I was telling someone in the room that um, so I did my mother's mother's side and my mother's father's side. When I did the Bennett reunion, the Watkins found out, and the Watkins said, well, "Wait a minute, what about us?" Yeah. You know, so I did theirs. And now, when my father's side hears about it, trust they're going to be asking me for the same thing and so it's like I might as well go into business and do this for everybody else because I will tell you one of the things that we kept hearing from the Watkins is um, because you could be outside on your phone you could be outside on your laptop so we have uh, relatives and I can't remember where cousin Pam was I think she's in Texas so she was outside and her neighbors heard her laughing and came over and they were watching our reunion and they were like, well, we want that done too. talk to your cousin. This is just something that people want to do. It's just really fun. It's, it's, you know, the way things are moving and it doesn't have to take a pandemic. You can just on Zoom or other platforms. I'm only talking about Zoom because that's the one that I use, but you can reach out and, and have video calls um, and just have breakfast with each other. There's really no reason to not stay connected. Uh, Dwayne, did you have a question? I saw a hand up. You got to unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. So okay, my, I live in Indianapolis, but I was bo uh, born and raised there in Fort Wayne. Uh, 
okay. and um, graduated from Fort Wayne Central in 71. So I know Ron, I know some people uh, on the call here, but your um, this this was very pertinent to me because we were supposed to have a reunion in June of this year, and we had to cancel it. And uh, some of the some of the family members said, "Well, let's have a virtual." And I said, "Nah." See, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of what you shared uh, here was very helpful and encouraging. So, so thank you so much. But there's two one uh, two other things that I want to mention. M um, so my family's the Perrys. My wife's family is the Causes there in Fort Wayne. And one of the close connections to my uh, DNA connection to my wife is a Janie Moore. There's the Moore family. It's like second second cousins and we don't know anything about that family and then there's another second cousin that's the howards mm -hmm. and i just saw roberta's shirt and roberta we have to talk about the howards too because i did not i didn't i didn't know that but um you know because i'm all over the dna connections and 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 building family that way but so i i'd love to talk to you about uh the moors also okay so I'll, I'll i'll give it back well first of all i have to show my shirt this is the bennett pride shirt that we <laughs> put together since you mentioned sure yes i had to talk about it. i had to wear it today my sister is actually wearing purple she didn't know but she knew you know she mm -hmm. knew um and secondly <clears throat> you know when i hear now that i know the different surnames when you said more uh, cousin Deborah has done extensive research on the Moore side. The, the beauty of this, I cannot express this enough, is that uh, first off, it takes all kinds of people. The planning committee for the, the Bennetts, they were like, I don't know anything about technology. It's like, you don't have to. I'll do that. But what you know is the family history, or you know uh, so-and-so had daughters by so-and-so. You know, even if it's just family gossip, Everybody brings something to the table. You know, um, on the, uh, the Watkins side, that one cousin that talks trash all the time, he was very valuable when it came time to run the party. All he did was talk trash for four hours. He just pitted family against family. You know, he was like, Dwayne, you're gonna let your brother outdance you like that? He just got the party started. So whenever people talk about, I'm not technology, you know, Get some of those, that's one way to get the younger people involved. Because my cousin Clayton runs our Facebook page. He's younger than me, more power to him. He posts like six, five, six times a week. So everybody's going there, you know, when I find something, you know, the memes that we laugh at, send that to the person who's running your Facebook page. There is a meme that said something about, um, you know, don't, don't, don't let Thanksgiving be the day that you try to cook something. If you don't know how to cook, just bring pop or whatever. And, you know, those things that, that make you laugh, send them to the Facebook person and share it with your family. Just share it. But as far as the Moors go, Cousin Deborah lit up when you said that. So you, you guys need to connect because who knows, you know, who absolutely knows. Um, yes, Dr. Brothers. I did do some quick checking because the, the Watkins, my wife is a Watkins and uh -oh. she's from, and, and the Watkins are from Virginia. That was the reason I was asking the question. Yeah. So uh, again, there may, there may be a connection, you know, because I know we're in Virginia, the whole gamut, the whole nine yards. So I'll have to check with you folks and see if, if they are possibly related. And, and then uh, uh, we, we have uh, Dwayne Perry. I, I don't know whether, uh, 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 are the Perry's from the East Coast at all? Oh. Sorry. No, he's muted. I put it on uh, mute all. I'm going to take that Okay. Uh, ask all to unmute. How about that? Go okay. ahead. So it's interesting you asked that because I didn't know any Perry's I was related to until 2015. That okay. started my genealogical work or getting interest, interested in it. But most of the my, my Perry's come from Sugarlock, Noxaby County, Mississippi. <clears throat> okay, now they there is a connection to Georgia, and then 
the as we I can go back as far as 1791 for one of the Perrys, and she was obviously a slave. She was from Virginia. That's that that's all the information that I have at this point. Gotcha. Okay, I'll, I'll check and see uh, what I can find out uh, on, on on the Perry side. But thank you. I'll thank you. Uh, Mr. Inslee, yes. I know, uh, Dwayne, now you related to the Stewarts too, right? Dr. Stewart and Sam Stewart. Uh, Bunch of good. From, you know, like Joe Burnett's my cousin, and you relate to Joe. And uh, I found some little things on the Stewarts, and uh, Sam Stewart, the first. Uh, uh, was on the police force here in Fort Wayne. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, I don't know too much about the Perry's, but I know that as far as the Stewart's for it. Okay, any other questions in the room? Uh, and Guzzi, oh, uh, yeah. Dwayne, was on, Dwayne was on mute when he had, when uh, Vaughn asked that question. He said something, but it didn't come through. Oh, I'm sorry. You should be able to unmute yourselves at this point. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, yeah, so I might as well give the other line. So stewards, yes. And and Vaughn, I have a lot of information on the stewards. Many steward was Joe's mother. Yeah. Joe was mother. And of course, I know all of them. They, they originate, they come from Arkansas, mm -hmm. down in Hope or Hempstead County, Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, my, my second great grandfather, uh, Samuel H. Stewart, and then I found out he was a slave owner. So he was white. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I know that family uh, a lot. My other family members are the Warfields and the Walters. So th these are big families there in Fort Wayne. So uh, a, a number of you have a uh, problem. My mother was Jean Warfield, Jean Eloise Warfield. She was born right there in Fort Wayne also. And then my father was born in St. Louis. He's from the Stewart side. So how about that, everybody? I let him tell that himself <laughs> for, for some pretty much obvious reasons and uh, not to take any thunder from this absolutely wonderful presentation that Nguzi has done. So Dwayne has joined our society and uh, also is going to be joining into our efforts to do what we had originally planned uh, two years ago, uh, as so far as the uh, uh, the Warfield collection is concerned, is getting is getting getting a great deal of momentum, not just uh, in the African American community, but in the Anglo American community and stretching out across the country. Unbeknownst to many people, Dwayne has done a serious serious in-depth research of his family and, and uh, able to share just a little bit towards what he had done based on my own personal curiosities. But we had a really great fine session uh, this week uh, sharing uh, on things. And there were lots and lots of names that were mentioned in there that I just felt would be better shared with him saying what he had to say himself. And I see it was quite effective. I'm seeing that, um, uh, Deborah has an, uh, a, a connection in there as well to possibility. Vaughn has one. Al has one. And I've come to the mindset doing genealogy research that like minds do come together. And that somehow or another, we do end up finding more of our family coming together as a group, sharing our information moving forward. I think it's pretty fabulous that uh, we're... Um, or feedback from our members and, and gleaning new members at the same time. So yeah, Doc is on there. So we, I think this is gonna be great. Um, uh, and Guzzy, just a little business on the side, call me when we're done, please. Okay, um, that's, <laughs> that's all the time that we have. I put in the chat, but I wanna say it out loud that our next workshop will be Saturday, September 18th at one o'clock. Uh, Dr. Brothers will be presenting um, and it is going to be about immigration, naturalization, and travel records. So these uh, research tools and tips uh, workshops will be once a month. Um, if, you're, if you're looking ahead, the next one would be October 16th. 
and the one after that would be November 20th, if you want to put us on your calendar. So for September, it's September 18th. These are all Saturdays, and everyone starts, they all start at 1 o'clock. Saturday, September 18th at 1 o'clock. Saturday, October 16th at 1 o'clock. Saturday, November 20th at 1 o'clock. Yes. Allow me, uh, allow me to say on the back of what Nguzi just shared with you, because uh, it's immigration, naturalization, and travel. If you are able to come to the library for the presentation so that you can follow up on anything that you might be interested in, it might be better for you. If not, then of course there is a great deal available online, but it is, as she just noted, it is in person and on Zoom as well. Yes. So you're, if we don't have your email, uh, we can't send you out a notice. I believe everybody on here is on our email list and then also in the room. So that's, that's our time. Thank you so much for listening. This was my first presentation and I was so nervous, but you've made me feel so well. You did well. And, you did and well. Doris, Doris Green, I saw in the chat that, that you have a family member, Otis Moore. We may be connected. <laughs> I mean, we are all family in the eyes of God, but I'm just saying, you know. So um, yes, yes, I heart you too. Thank you, Arletha. I see you. Thank you, Marsha Clark. That's another cousin. She's on my Bennett side. And she not only attended the Bennett reunion, she wanted to come to the Watkins reunion too. That's how we get down. But the, the great thing about that is that because I have those, I have the double cousins. Remember Luella Watkins married my uncle How or my uncle Howard. And then my grandfather married a Watkins. Um, the Bennett's that were Watkins came to the Watkins reunion. And then because both families were in Richmond, we got even more information about Richmond. What's that? Double cousin. I've been corrected by my sister, double cousin. Um, so it just keeps growing and growing and everyone is just so excited to meet in person. Dwayne, I will tell you that for future reference, you may want to plan um, a Zoom, something or other, just in case your plans fall through. Because the COVID numbers are rising, things may shut back down. Zoom is also a great alternative. You know, you may consider that. So uh, unless anyone has anything else to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank I see you, you in, the, in the chat. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon and come back and see us Saturday, September 18th. Thank you.